When it comes to things like aspirations, the government has a set of aspirations to raise the country as a whole. How do you carry that across through to the population, which uh, at one stage, a lot of pioneers, uh, and they sort of grew with the country mm -hmm. over the 50 years. Now we have an influx of uh, new uh, uh, members in the community uh, who may have different aspirations. So how do we then sort of get the aspirations aligned so that we all sort of pulling together? Certainly, I know for my grandparents, I don't think they necessarily thought of settling here when they came. Uh, but it evolved, they settled down, they got married, uh, some went back, some of they went back, and especially those who are Chinese, they went back to China, and then the communists took over. <laughs> some, like my grandparents came, uh, came back again. Um, and it evolves with time, just as I believe today, uh, the Singaporeans of today will continue to evolve in the direction that we will evolve. Some, a lot of it will be fairly natural. I mean, you can't, you can't mandate and control everything. You, know, you, you move in certain directions, but we are also buffeted by a lot of uh, pressures and waves which are beyond us. So in many ways, we are also price takers. But how we ride those waves and how we ride those waves together will, I think, in turn, iteratively uh, allow all of us, both government people, to figure out where that final destination is. And it's, an, it's a continuous journey. Immigration remains important, an important issue for all Singaporeans to consider. Uh, is it important? Uh, if so, how do we bring that about? What are the numbers? How do you keep it sustainable? How do you move it at a pace where people can come in and adapt and, and, and adjust? And then you have a comfortable flow. And we have always had that flow uh, throughout history. And I think in some, in some ways it's a strength for us as well uh, because of low fertility rate. We need to figure out how then do you uh, keep Singapore sustainable, having Singaporeans here. Um, but at the same time, uh, we are also very mindful that with more uh, diversity, which on one hand is a strength, it also creates stresses in society. So the pace is important and I think you know the angst that Singaporeans face, uh, and you still have some of that today, but uh, especially in the few years before, and especially in the last election, you could sense that frustration and angst because I think we cross a social threshold. Uh, we have always had people coming in to work. We have had immigration over the years, it's nothing new. Uh, but obviously, as with all things, perhaps there was a tipping point. And tipping points are difficult to pinpoint. You probably know where the tipping point is when, oh, I just crossed it. <laughs> and I believe we crossed somewhat of a threshold somewhere, my sense of it, in the latter half of the 2000s. Uh, because when I came in, I actually wanted to understand, actually, what happened? Did we miscalculate? Did we uh, underprovide? And why? I mean, what was the context? You know? And as, as I tried to analyze, I had to go back, actually, for me, thematically, I went all the way back to 97, the Asian financial crisis, because it was a setting, you know, of Asian financial crisis in 97, dot-com bubble burst in 2001, you had uh, post, you had 911, then you had SARS. And in, over that period of seven, eight years, I, I think in our history, economic history, certainly, we didn't have such a sustained period of fairly large uh, disturbances and pressures and a lot of uncertainty and, and we look at the data as well first half of 2000s economic growth uh, not great and we were anxious and concerned about where we were going to go and if you remember that was also when I believe Thaksin came to Thailand and you know, there's that huge euphoria about where they could go and they will build a canal and the airport um, so the worry was not just about growth, it's always about jobs and opportunities because people were beginning to be more educated, our young people had aspirations that needed to be met and you needed investments and economy to be fairly healthy for companies to be here. So that was also when the IR decision was taken, hugely controversial even within cabinet but the, the thinking was on balance that was necessary as a necessary step to rejuvenate and we embarked on that and in that few years, 06, 07, 08, thereabouts, uh, opportunities grew. Uh, we opened up in terms of uh, foreign workers coming in, uh, employment search, but I think it was too fast. But having said that, we began to build a fairly decent base for ourselves. And in the 08 financial crisis, we bounced back, and very few countries bounced back the way we did. So there was a cost, but that also allowed us to stave off the the negative aspects of that uh, 08 financial crisis. So 
unfortunately, I think it did cross that threshold. And in the 08 financial crisis, we were concerned because we were taking actions, but we weren't sure whether we would dig ourselves out of that hole that quickly. So we slowed down some of the infrastructure projects like housing. So unfortunately, we bounced back and then you scaled back and then with the numbers. So we are rectifying that, uh, certainly in terms of infrastructure, tightening our manpower, that's something we do. Um, but we had crossed a bit of the threshold and we need to learn to manage that. Um, so assimilation, um, education, and I think managing that flow uh, is important. So we began that tightening about 2009, 2010 period and gradually uh, ratcheting it to a level. And we're always watching it because you can overdo it and a lot of it is about confidence by businesses, both local and foreign. And if you begin to slow down more than you should, become a lot less attractive as you could be compared to your competitors, it actually affects Singaporeans.